You are listening to Making Sense with Alison Blackler. Welcome to Making Sense. This is our 11th episode now. We have been creating this show for you since January and time is definitely flying by. But we really want to thank everyone for listening in and for sending messages and obviously requests. We are here today in the studio at Wirral Wave Radio at Make in Hamilton Square in the heart of Birkenhead. And with me in the studio is George who, as we all know, is my left hand, right hand and everything man for the technical side of the show. And maybe sometimes he might say hello, but I'm not sure he's going to today. No, he's shaking his head. Okay, good. So you are very welcome to this show. We hope that you are enjoying listening to the shows. Remember, you can get them on the internet uh, if you've missed any. And our last show, we focused on habits and patterns in our behaviours, in our thoughts and our feelings. And my guest on that show was Danny Greaves, who shared some ideas on how to create new habits. So if you didn't listen to it, you will uh, not know that I set a challenge about trying to fold your arms in the opposite way to how you do it automatically. And that was just to emphasise the fact that changing habits can take effort. So check out if you haven't listened to it and remember if you are trying to create a new habit take your time because it will take a lot of practice okay so let's focus on this show this time we are going to look at some other ways of making sense of our lives and the idea behind this show is to share lots of different techniques and approaches to make sense of our complex minds and give us some answers Our special guest is Tamsin Hartley from The Listening Space and she will be sharing a special meditation to help focus the mind and we will be playing that later on in the show. And what else we've got on the show? We've got some great tunes obviously lined up for you, all selected with lyrics linked to the topics. And we've also got a show, a quote of the show from Don Miguel Ruzi. So do stay tuned for that. But let's just quickly think about our comfort zone and what this actually means. One thing that I want to share with you is that me doing this show is me pushing me myself out of my comfort zone. But one thing that we need to pay attention to is our limiting beliefs or our beliefs about ourselves and to as to whether they are holding you back. So we often think that we want to push ourselves out of our comfort zone and the thing that will be stopping us are our beliefs quite often. So these can limit us because they become the norm and these norms then become our comfort zone. So the thought of pushing yourself can feel uncomfortable. So we don't. You you often know that a different situation makes you feel uncomfortable. So the brain is a protection piece of kit and it will stop you. It will always have you thinking, can't do that or even catastrophize to think I could never do that. So sometimes we feel unwilling to move out of our comfort zones because it feels more comfortable. It it's, it makes sense, doesn't it? But often these blocks, they do block us and they block our potential and they block our growth and we get stuck. So we just need to be mindful of this and that pushing ourselves out of our comfort zone may be exactly that uncomfortable. So we need to just pay attention to life sometimes and that it can often feel uncontrollable and often then people don't know how to control it or how to change it. When we hold on to negative and often painful situations without realising, you are limiting yourself in one way or another. To make the right changes takes courage. Another path often feels unachievable because we are usually in the emotional part of the mind and therefore unable to see new possibilities. In some instances, old habits and behaviours which used to work effectively, particularly when we are younger, often become redundant and unhelpful. They may be unhelpful now, but they may well have been a coping strategy once. For example, being invisible as a child 
may have worked to keep yourself out of trouble, but as an adult this approach would leave you feeling lonely and likely to be anxious to make friends or speak up for yourself. So, what are we saying? We are saying that we are likely to stay in our comfort zone even when this may be negative. One way to start moving out of this unhealthy comfort zone is to get curious. Curiosity, I absolutely love this word and I love what it stands for. I'm wondering if anyone else feels the same. Getting curious about behaviours and noticing habits puts us in a different place. When you can spot and admit that you are being held back by something, probably a self-belief or a story from the past, you can make the change. So the first thing is, is for us to notice it. When your relationships are forming a pattern and not working out, you can consider what is buried deep within that needs your attention. Just for clarity, when I say being curious, this does not entail overanalyzing, overthinking or being paranoid. These behaviours are the ones we want to move away from. Instead, we want you to notice your reactions to situations and any thoughts that go with them. But the biggie here is with no judgment. That is where I see most people go wrong. They judge themselves for the thoughts, the feelings or the behaviours that they have. We are just noticing. We do not want to switch on that self-critical voice. These reactions can become the habit and then become part of you. So you are looking out for any negative behaviours, ones like automatic negative thinking, people pleasing, jumping to conclusions or adopting the blame position. Something else to become aware of is the broken record thinking. We can spend a lot of time being in our heads when we are very repetitive in our thinking and our thoughts are spinning round and round. This usually leads to frustration, confusion and even anger. Or you might find yourself consumed with emotions like sadness or anxiety. And this also feels out of control. It then becomes difficult to focus on anything else and does affect your enjoyment, your concentration. And for some people, it keeps them awake at night. Often the kinds of things we keep on repeat are how we handled a situation or how someone else has been. It might be if someone has said something to you that you heard as a criticism and you keep that going round and round in your head. They might have made a negative comment, behaved badly in your eyes, ignored you or challenged you. And in your mind, you are constantly running over what was said and even what wasn't said. What if, what if, what kind of thinking does that create? Or trying to work out what you should say next. The broken record can be very exhausting. It can actually burn us out and it prevents us from coming up with anything useful anything new and is far from inspiring. What we tend to do is we look for a quick fix and tend to focus externally rather than on ourselves. And as I said, this is quite exhausting and often ends up feeling like you are without a solution, without a new solution. When we're able to minimise the internal chatter, you get a clearer mind to think and see a situation differently and probably more innovatively. So the first steps that we are saying here is for us to be curious and notice. Remember, no judgment. And when we come to listen to Tamsin in the interview shortly, you will hear a technique for you to be able to do just that. So I think it's definitely time for a tune. And we have picked an upbeat tune, which is very fitting to our topic and certainly something I'm going to come back to after this tune. So let's have a listen to Listen to Your Heart by Roxette. I hope you enjoy it. But that love falls apart Your little piece of 
Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that. I want you to consider the notion of listening to your heart, as it says in that song, rather than your head. Often people say it, but they don't really think about actually what it means. And I think it's important to just pause and just for us to think about that. So our mind is said to be one, the one that defines every action in our in our everyday life. But when it comes to taking critical decisions, we are often advised to think from our heart. But let's think about what does that actually mean? Is it possible to think from your heart? 
And the science says yes. Science says yes, it is possible to think from your heart. It is a proven fact that the heart is one of the first organs that develops in the fetus and 65% of it is made up of neurons. It generates powerful electric fields which change in relation to our emotions greater than any organ in the body. That means our heart also plays a role in our perception of reality and it's not merely a pumping device. Thinking from your heart is to give more importance to your emotions than rational or logic. That's why people with less or no emotions are often called cold-hearted. You're considered heartbroken when you're affected emotionally by a relationship or something similar. Leaving aside the science behind for some time, what does this actually mean for us? By listening to ourselves, we will truly start to connect with ourselves and the path that we are meant to be on. To put it simply, following your heart means listening to your instincts and emotions, rather than relying on your mind. And listening to your heart means figuring out what you feel and what is going on with that. Listening to your heart doesn't just apply to relationships and dating. It also applies to career, personal life, and actually any other things in your life. So it's something for us to think about, isn't it? Although sometimes we need to be mindful that we do then need to engage the rational, uh, critical mind. So sometimes we do need to analyse something, taking a critical decision in your life. But, but being able to balance the heart and the, the mind is so important. Because some situations do prioritise our emotions. And sometimes we really do need to think logically and not get our emotions too involved. So it is something for us to balance all the time. Okay, so I think it's time for us to move on to hearing our guest of the show. I had a lovely chat with Tamsin Hartley from The Listening Space. And Tamsin is a coach and an author and she shares some of her work. Get ready for some time out because hopefully you can do the meditation that's inside this interview with us right now in this moment. So I hope you enjoy it. Online and mobile. Alexa, play We're a Wave. We're a Wave. So I am absolutely delighted to be joined by Tamsin Hartley today. Tamsin is a coach, a trainer, the founder of Listening Space, and also an author. Welcome to Making Sense. Thank you. Welcome. And thank you for inviting me here to join you. You're welcome. Tell everyone a little bit more about you. Okay. So, well, actually, I started life as a physiotherapist for 10 years and then um, I retrained as a coach and um, I became fascinated in listening and learning how to listen to ourselves and to listen to others. Um, And over the years, I've created uh, this way of listening called the listening space. Lovely. And I think something that's really interesting about your offer, Tamsin, is that we all think we're really good at listening. We do it all day long. We're listening to our internal chatter. We're listening to each other. And yet, actually, we're not that good at it, are we? (laughs) No, I think that would be fair to say. Um, And I think, well, it's interesting because people, when you talk about listening, they're often thinking about, how do I listen to somebody else? Or is somebody else listening to me? But actually, do we really listen to ourselves? Um, so I think there's all sorts of different le- levels of listening. And, and so I'd like to bring a bit of attention today to that. How do you listen to yourself no. um, so that you can uh, accept the whole range of your thoughts, feelings, your experience? Because when you can do that, it becomes so much easier to really listen to other people. Mm, like I love that and I think um, my big thing is always let's start with self first and, yeah. and then we can improve with others so I love the fact that we can focus on that today and Tamsin and I met on a course which is obviously part of what you've developed and you've taken that to, to into the listening space so tell everyone a little bit about that um so yeah um I think we met each other through a clean language course um, and clean language uh, is, a, is a way of asking questions that was created by a New Zealander called David Grove. 
And at its heart lies a specific set of questions asked in a particular way, and they prevent you from contaminating the conversation. That's why they're called clean. Um, They prevent you from contaminating the conversation with your assumptions, with your suggestions. And I have a metaphor uh, that I like to use that helps you to listen in this way, I think. So what I say is that when you're going to listen, whether it's listening to yourself or others, if you can first wipe your feet on the welcome mat. So this welcome mat is my metaphor for wiping away any desire to fix, change, analyze, interpret, and you're welcoming in the whole range of your thoughts, feelings, whether that be bodily sensation feelings or your emotions, and you're welcoming them in equal measure. Because so often we um, suppress thoughts and feelings because we feel that we shouldn't be having them. I shouldn't feel like that. I oughtn't to be feeling that way or thinking those thoughts when actually it's just human nature to be self-doubting, to be a bit paranoid sometimes. It's just part of what makes us uh, who we are, where we, we have moments of vulnerability. And if we can accept those and be with them, it can actually be very settling. I think it's so important for us all to hear that, to remember that we our thoughts happen. We can't help them. We will think things. We'll think things about other people. We'll think things about ourselves. But the trick is what are you going to do with those thoughts? And are you going to follow them, believe them? Or can you, as you're going to help us today, understand how to pay a bit more attention to them? Yeah, absolutely. And I think the risk is if we if we don't allow ourselves to have the whole range of our thoughts and feelings, we either suppress them, and that can have an impact on our physical and well, uh, or emotional and or emotional well-being over time. But it can also, so in, in in doing that, we're kind of rupturing the relationship we have with ourselves. Or um, so we either suppress them, or we try and throw them onto somebody else. Mm-hmm. So, for example, if I'm feeling really angry about something. Now, if I can't allow myself to feel those feelings, there's a risk um, that I might pass them on to somebody else. Um, I have a a psychotherapist friend who has uh, shared this metaphor with me that it's almost like you get a ball and that ball of um, anger. If I can't feel it myself, um, then I might take that ball and try and pass it on to you, pass it on to somebody else. And when I do that, so that I don't have to feel those feelings myself. When I do that, I risk rupturing the relationship with that other person. Mm. So in so many ways, being able to listen to ourselves and being with the whole range of our thoughts and feelings um, can make a big difference to our well-being, to our relationships with others. Mm. Because when we are passing it on to someone else, as you, to use your metaphor, we're doing it to try and make ourselves feel better, aren't we? Yeah. Absolutely. And I always yeah. remind people of that, you know, when somebody's been pretty horrible to, to a family member or a friend, you know, you remembering that they're doing it to try and make themselves feel better it doesn't mean it's OK, yeah. but it means that that's what they're doing. And obviously yeah. that becomes very dangerous for relationships, friendships, etc. Even in work situations, it happens too. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. Ah, good. Absolutely. OK, tell us a little bit more. So we wipe our feet on the welcome mat. Yeah. Um, And what's the next steps for for people? Um, Getting curious. Getting curious and finding a way of saying, asking yourself, I wonder what's happening for me right now. And clean questions, clean language questions are a great way of doing that. But it's just a way of saying, okay, I wonder what's happening for me without judging, but just being curious. Um, And yeah, that can make a big difference. Um, (laughs) Yeah. Go on. <laughs> so um, one one way of doing, I mean, actually, probably the easiest way is to um, start with uh, an activity that does just that, um, that it invites curiosity about your experience. Um, would that be OK to do that now? Sure, of course. Okay. So on my um, website, the listening space dot go dot dot co dot UK, uh, there are a number of clean meditations And these use clean questions to invite awareness of your experience, all different aspects of your experience. And you can do those. You can download those for free. Mm. But we could do one of those now. 
having wiped our feet on the welcome mat and just notice um, what arises for us without judging and just welcoming the whole range of thoughts, feelings that might arise. And we can do it by bringing awareness to our breathing. Brilliant. I tell you what, let's play a tune which you have chosen, Tamsin, just to give yeah. people time in case they fancy just doing it right now and they just need to go and shut the door or turn their phone off or just give them a few moments because I think this is going to be quite a special moment. So I really want to give people a chance. So as you know, on this show, we like to pick music that has uh, an upbeat tune or a great lyric, a great message. And I asked Tamsin what she would like to pick. Tell us what you've picked. Yeah, okay, so I've chosen the Communard You Are My World um, for a couple of reasons. Um, First of all, I just love the upbeatness of it. It makes me want to dance. I love dancing. I realise I haven't done enough of that over lockdown. Um, So, yeah, it makes me think, get out and dance more. But also um, the title of it, the lyrics of it, You Are My World. And I think, to me, that speaks of... I am because of you. You know, we are because we belong together. Um, And uh, there's a lovely um, uh, African, I think it's a Zulu uh, saying, Ubuntu, that we, I I am seen because of you. We are in community. This is a community radio. You know, it's, there's something so important about that. And so, yeah, the, the, the title of the lyrics of it um, speak to that for me. Brilliant. Right. Well, let's play that now. Hope you all enjoy it. And as Tamsin says, have a little dance round and we'll be back later.
welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that tune and I hope that it has inspired a few people to have a little dance around because I think you're absolutely right, Tamsin. We don't often allow ourselves to do things like that and yet they give us just so much joy and releasing so many happy, happy hormones. So we're going to have a little practice, a little try with you now. So tell us what everyone needs to do. Okay, so find yourself uh, a, a quiet spot. And I'm going to invite you just to make yourself comfortable, whatever that means for you. I'm going to do a clean breathing meditation. So I'm going to give you an instruction followed by a set of questions. And after each question, I'm just going to pause a while to give you plenty of time to um, notice where your attention goes. Just notice what arises for you in response to each question. Now, remember, you've got to wipe your feet on the welcome mat. So that means not trying to judge, just accepting what is, what arises for you. So you're not trying to get anywhere with this. You're not trying to achieve anything. You're just being with your experience right now as it is. So here we go. (laughs) Notice your breathing. And hmm, what kind of breathing is that breathing? In whereabouts do you notice your breathing? Do you notice your breathing on the inside? or the outside. And does that breathing have a size or a shape? And does that breathing have a sound? And is there anything else about that breathing? And bringing your awareness back to the room around you. Um, One thing you can do, so I've asked you some clean questions about your breathing. One thing you can do now is just to get a pen and paper and represent what arose for you in some way on paper. And that might be an image and it might be some words. So if you want to have a go, grab yourself a piece of paper and a pen. And, uh, and just represent what arose for you. Brilliant. So there you go, a clean meditation. Thank you, Tamsin. That was really special. I think just everyone we know might have a different response to some of those questions and all of their answers 
are great. But I think what I notice about when I was doing it with you is it is just bringing your attention away from everything else that might have been going on, whatever busyness I've got, what's next after this, etc. It just brings your attention, doesn't it? Just some, to something that your body knows and appreciates and is actually a very safe, safe sound and a very safe uh, activity, for want of a better word. Yeah, and it may be that you only ask one or two questions. What kind of breathing? You know, just to bring awareness, what kind of breathing is that? Mm. It's like a way of saying, I wonder what's happening for me right now. Yeah. So it doesn't need to have to be a whole range of those five questions. It could just be one. What kind of breathing? Mm. Whereabouts am I noticing my breathing? I think it's really powerful uh, to actually spend a little bit of time thinking about this because I was working with somebody the other day and she, I noticed that her breathing was very, very high up in her chest. Mm. And um, she hadn't noticed that she was doing that, but actually once she ha- had put a little bit, and I did direct the, the attention because it was so obvious that she was breathing up very, very high up in her chest and, and what she was saying was, you know, was was obviously quite anxious type of thoughts. And just by being able to pay attention to that, when I saw her the next time, she said it had made a huge difference. Yeah, she was just stretching her shoulders out a bit and breathing deeper into her tummy and it was giving her a different experience yeah and and allowing that experience to be what it is and I think one of the things that can be really useful is um, particularly in moments when we feel uncomfortable maybe triggered by something that we're experiencing difficulty perhaps in a conversation with somebody else Um, it can be really useful just to have a way of pressing pause in that moment and just being able to say to yourself, ask yourself, you know, I wonder what's happening right now and being open to whatever that might be and just sitting with that experience, not need, not needing to fix it or make it better necessarily, but noticing because in the awareness, things often change anyway, as they did for this person that you were talking about. Yeah, very powerful, very, very powerful. Yeah. Okay, so tell everyone where they can find you. How can they, if they really loved what you've done, I know you've got a book, obviously you can talk about that and any other things that you've got going on. So yes, I've got a website, um, as I mentioned earlier, the listeningspace.co.uk. There are lots of resources there, links to the book, the Listening Space book. I've also written a book of poems called Captured Moments. Um, At the moment, I'm in the process of writing a book for parents called Being a Parent, Bringing a Listening Space to Family Life. Um, I've got a YouTube channel. Uh, and you can, on the face, on the, sorry, website, there are links to Facebook page, Instagram, LinkedIn. And I'm in the process of um, creating short videos of some simple processes like the one I've just done with you, some um, meditations, I'm um, going to be doing one about brain awareness, I'm going to be doing one about um, uh, how you can settle yourself in moments of stress, tension. Um, so yeah, you can be watching out for those as well. Nice, thank you so much, such a lot to on offer for everyone, so thank you so much. So what's Let's end with the one little small tip. I've got this thing. I'm always saying, what's one small thing that, that we could do that we could take on? What would be, after this conversation, Tamsin, what would be your one thing, one, your one small thing that you could offer just to get people started? My gift to everyone is that welcome mat. Everyone can have their own welcome mat. I have a, a proper mat, like doormat, and it's, got a, it's a lovely, rich yellow colour and it's got a sunshine on it. And if you could allow yourself every now and again in a safe space to um, sit with, to be with whatever's happening for you right now and know that that's okay. It's part of what it means to be human and to be able to get curious and ask yourself, "Ah, I wonder what's happening for me right now. Lovely. I love that. And I think there's something that I'm often encouraging people to do is to do exactly that and to sit with that discomfort. Yeah, and a lot of people sort of look at me as if say, "What you you suggesting that I sit with whatever's yeah. going on and that discomfort?" And yes, I am because in that discomfort, we can often find the most richest, most amazing realizations, can't we? And not to be frightened of it; it's normal. Yeah, the fear of the discomfort just magnifies the discomfort. 
Yeah, lovely. Brilliant. So welcome, Matt. <laughs> welcome, Matt. Lovely. We've all got our own milk and Matt now. So yeah. Let, yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you so much, Tamsin, for coming and sharing your wisdom and your all your wonderful resources that you've got. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you for inviting me. It's been lovely to be here. You're welcome. You are listening to Making Sense on Wirral Wave Radio. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you were able to take advantage of listening to the meditation and actually taking a little bit of time out. I hope you found Tamsin's thoughts helpful and interesting. Such a powerful tool to have in your toolkit to be able to pause and notice your breathing or your thoughts without judgment, just noticing. Remember, if you do fancy listening to the meditation again or you weren't able to pause to do that, you can catch it on the internet on Wirral Waves website. Um, and this show is also played out across the week. So it's played on a Monday, 7 till 8 p.m., a Thursday, 1 till 2 p.m., a Friday, 7 till 8 p.m., and a Sunday morning, 8 till 9 a.m. So plenty of opportunity for you to listen in, particularly if you want to have another go at that meditation. Remember, practice, practice, practice is the key with meditation and mindfulness. I often he hear people saying they tried it and it didn't work. The practice is the activity and you can get better over time. The mind is very powerful and will keep pulling your attention elsewhere. And the practice is to keep bringing your attention back to whatever you are focusing on, whether that's the breath, what is around you, the chair, or the guided meditation that you are listening to. So do check it out, because again, if you link it to last time's show, we're trying to create a new habit and a positive one. Okay, so it is time for quote of the show. And this time we have chosen one from Don Miguel Ruiz. I think that's how you say his name. And he is a renowned spiritual teacher and international best-selling author. He has written many books. And I think one of them, The Four Agreements, will be one that we'll cover in a future show because it is a great read. Anyway, one of his quotes, which fits with the theme for this show today, goes like this. Go inside and listen to your body because your body will never lie to you. Your mind will play tricks, but the way you feel in your heart in your gut is the truth. So it just summarizes, doesn't it, how much more powerful our bodies are letting us know sometimes what's right for us. Powerful words and one we can adopt, and if we can adopt, can make a huge difference to your happiness. At the core of our inner emotions, the guidance provided by our heart makes us feel a lot happier. Well, I am delighted because you probably know I'm often here with me and George and I've actually got someone else in the studio with us today. So welcome, Georgia. Hello. It's lovely to be here. Oh, it's great to have you here. So Georgia is the founder of the Soap Pantry and the Loft. Tell us a little bit about all of that. <laughs> uh, so originally I was in another full-time job, uh, not happy not kind of the work-life balance was just completely out of sync and um I realized that something had to give and it was either my mental health or you know my job so in the end I use my hobby as um a full-time business making soaps and it just basically took off from there um I was originally in the loft as a kind of co-working space for office use um but then in the end, um, it became the manufacturing production area of the soap pantry. And since then, I only used about a fifth of the space and thought, if I can do it here and I can build and level up my business, why can't other people, why can't other women in business, other small businesses, which are usually um, from from the back of the, of the house using um, conservatories, living rooms, a space to in try and enhance the business. They needed a place to go, which was just strictly their own, their own space to kind of level up. Nice. I love the fact that you've said I needed to prioritize my mental health and go and follow my dreams. That's just music to my ears <laughs> and definitely what 
lots of people need to do. But as we've said in this show many times, and we'll say it again, it takes courage to do that. It does, yeah. At the end of the day, I am going to pat myself on the back because it does take a lot of courage, but mm. you need to find that um, that courage because otherwise, like you were saying before and earlier on, it's just you get into a habit where, and it's not necessarily a positive habit, it can be a negative, where you're stuck in a, you're stuck in a space that you can't get out of and you feel like there's no way out and you've just got to make that make that jump and make the change and love it's it. all done for the, for the love best. It. And I love your vision for others, supporting others, so not only growing your own business, but also supporting others to do the same. So one of the one of the things that I came along to, which was lovely, you had a, a, a networking event and you've got ideas to do that again. So tell everyone yeah. a little bit about that. So again, being a businesswoman, um, it can seem like a really lonely place at times. And I wanted a space and an event. Um, I wanted to create an event so other women in business could come and network, get to know one another, build up on relationships, um, use it as a networking platform for their own businesses, um, collaborations, just to be around each other and to know how lonely it can get and to speak about these things. Um, I just thought it was really important. So that's why I hosted an event, a free event called just the Women's Networking, Business Networking, networking event. Um, and yeah, it seemed to go really, really well. Since then, we've had a lot of um, collaborations with one another. Um, people have been wanting to use the space for their own workshops. And yeah, it's been, it's taken off really well. So fingers crossed we'll be, we'll be hosting another one soon. Nice. And I think that whole thing about feeling alone feeling lonely, feeling like you're the only one um, is also something that I often talk about in my work but, and also on this show. So I think giving uh, space for people to come together and realise that they're not on their own and actually yeah. we're all in this together is so, so critical. And we've talked, haven't we, about doing some some workshops, maybe bringing people together, yeah. might be around networking, might be around business or maybe just generally around resilience and things and and the, the space that the loft is is quite a great space I think yeah. and it would be amazing to start to think about doing something together and getting some people in the room which also we are so desperate to do aren't we yeah oh definitely yes so Thank tell you everyone would. um your socials and where they can find you so they can find me at uh on Instagram Facebook and I do have my own website it's www.thesoappantry.co.uk I'm also on Instagram at the dot soap dot pantry. Just like that. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, it's been fab having you in the studio. Come and have a little word. And I think once we get our little uh, schedule together for a few ideas for these workshops, why don't you come back and then we can either talk about them coming up or I'll have done that and then you can come and talk about how it was whichever way around I think it would be brilliant yeah I would love to Can't oh wait. brilliant thanks so much for coming in <laughs> thank you very much thank you for tuning in to Making Sense with Alison Butler. okay so we have come to the end of another show thank you so much for listening in we really want you to help us develop this show so we do want to hear from you we need to hear your thoughts, your feedback, and obviously we can incorporate that into another episode. But we do also want to hear your requests for the music. We love picking the tunes for this show and we love them to have a great message and a great lyric. But we are very happy to take requests so we can play your favourite tune and give you a shout out. So remember, it needs to have a good vibe and a good lyric. I want to thank uh, Tamsin Hartley so much for taking the time out to come and chat with me remember you can check her out on her website uh, thelisteningspace.co.uk thank you to George for his skills in the production of this show thanks also to the Wirral Wave team for giving us this opportunity and thank you for listening in please do tell your friends about Wirral Wave Radio your community radio and check out all the other shows during the week there is a jam-packed schedule and definitely something for everyone's tastes. So in our next show, we have a very special guest, Christine Handy, and the focus will be hope. Christine is an international speaker, an accomplished model. She is a best-selling author and a nationally recognised um, 
not authoritarian, humanitarian, plus the survivor of breast cancer. Christine is actually based in sunny Florida in the United States, and I'm really looking forward to sharing her inspirational chat with you. We will leave you with a great tune and one with powerful lyrics. Phil Collins' Another Day in Paradise was written with him attempting to say something about the plights of the homeless, singing about seeing a man crossing the road to avoid a homeless woman and pleading for people to do something about the situation. Myself and George will be back with a new episode on the 30th of May. In the meantime, be kind to yourself and bye for now.
Thank you for listening to Making Sense with Alison Butler. You can be losers, set me free.